Welcome to the mighty world of Burley. Right in front of me, I have a Burley type called Dark Fired Kentucky. And Dark Fired Kentucky actually came from Virginia. So when you compare the leaves with the Virginia tobaccos, the leaves are very thick. This one has been smoked. Oh, wow. To avoid that the Indians were stealing their tobacco, the farmers took the tobacco into the house, hung it under the roof, and they heated with open fires. They were cooking over open fires, so the tobacco eventually took a little smoky note. And that was the birth of the Dark Fired Kentucky. This is an occurrence like many other things in the tobacco history. It wasn't intended. It just happened. And we are today very lucky. In 1864, a guy noticed that on a field in Kentucky, some of the plants were having a little bit thinner leaves. Not thin as Virginia, and not thick as the dark fire, but an in-between. So he took some seeds, brought them to Ohio, planted them out on the field, and the next harvest he had was what we call the white burley. And the white burley is the burley we use today. Not only we, but all. You have a slight cocoa note. Over here, I have something extremely interesting. It is actually a speciality. Perique today is only grown in St. James Paris in Louisiana, United States. The center stem is removed. It's put into this drum. A liquid is added. Then it's stored for two years. And when we remove the lid, you'll find this tobacco. Like leather, it's black. And when you smell it, extremely powerful. The liquid that is added, nobody knows what it is, but um, works, it does. And, um, well, secrets are beautiful. I appreciate when I see a secret and I can understand that I don't understand what happened. Uh, if we all understand it, uh, we lose interest. We just know the magic works. This was the mighty world of Burley. And please, let the magic live. Thank you for watching.